If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to open them to 1 Timothy chapter 6. And we shall read verse 12. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12. Fight the good fight of faith, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. I wanted you to notice particularly that the first clause of this verse, fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Well, the only fight we have is the fight of faith. I hear folks some say sometimes they're going to fight the devil. I don't know what for. They wouldn't be any match for the devil anyway. And secondly, Jesus has already defeated him for you. He was your substitute. Praise the Lord. Then again, I hear folks said, uh, say, I'm going to fight sin. Well, I'm not. I'm going to preach the cure for sin. No use fighting it. I have a cure for it. Praise God. Jesus is the cure. Amen. No, the only fight, the only fight that the believer is called upon to fight is the good fight of faith. Praise God. Well, if there is a fight to faith, and this text said fight the good fight of faith, so therefore there must be a fight to faith. If there is a fight, then there has to be enemies or hindrances to faith. If there wasn't any enemies to faith or hindrances to faith, there wouldn't be any fight to it, would it? So I want to speak to you this morning on six big hindrances to faith. Six big hindrances to faith. Now the Bible said in Romans 10th chapter the 17th verse, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Many people, if you talk to them, they will confess their lack of faith. But they fail to realize that really their lack of faith is not the problem. The reason for lack of faith is a lack of knowledge of God's word. For faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Well, somebody said, that's my trouble. I don't know much about the Word, and I need faith. Well, you can't get it any other way except through the Word. Well, someone said, I'm praying God would give it to me. Well, you're wasting your time. You might as well twiddle your fingers or thumbs and say, twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. It would do just as much good as it would for you to pray for faith. But if you'll take time to feed upon the Word of God yourself, and to listen to the ministry gifts that God's put in his church, and teachers are a ministry gift that he's put there, then through the word of God that's taught and preached that you feed upon, faith will come to your spirit and into your heart, for you can receive knowledge that way. A lack of knowledge will hinder us and hold us in bondage because we do not act upon God's word, friends, beyond knowledge. Faith will grow with an understanding of the Word. And if your faith is not growing, then your understanding of the Word is not growing. A lack of knowledge, in other words, a lack of what God's Word says, a lack of knowledge of our redemption, a lack of knowledge of our redemptive rights and privileges in Christ Jesus, is oft time the reason for unbelief. Now let's give you these six big hindrances to faith. First, number one, a lack of understanding of what it means to be a new creature or what the new creation means. You know, 2 Corinthians 5th chapter 17th verse said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And so a lack of understanding of what the new creation is and what it means hinders our faith life. Now, so many people, 
do not know that they are new creatures. They think God just forgave them of their sins. Well, you know it wouldn't do any good for God to forgive the sinner of his sins. It wouldn't help him a bit in the world. If that's all the sinner ever received was forgiveness of his sin, he'd still go to hell because he's a child of the devil. He has to be born again. He has to become a new creature in Christ Jesus. No, we are not just forgiven sinners. No, we are not poor, staggering, sinning, barely getting along church members. Praise God. No, we're not living away down at the end of the block on barely get along street right next to Grumble Alley. That's not us. We're new creatures created by God in Christ Jesus with the very life and the nature of God in our spirits. Praise the Lord. We are children of God, sons of God, and heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Many people do not know they have eternal life. They think of themselves as being saved from sin. But John says in his first epistle, These things write unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Praise God. And so when you know what you have and who you are in Christ, it makes all the difference in the world. I remember this scripture 30 years ago on the bed of affliction. I read it. And some way or another, it just never got away from me. I never took time to memorize it. I just read it one time, and it just seemed to sort of brand itself to my spirit and mind. Uh, this scripture that we quoted, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And I think that was one of the things that made a difference in my life and a lot of other folks. Now, I was just a youngster. I was saved on the bed of affliction, 15 years of age, almost 16. And I, I stayed upon that bed of affliction until I was approximately 17 years of age and was healed by the power of God. And uh, I, uh, for several years, for about four years then, I wasn't, or three years, I wasn't around full gospel people. I was a denominational Christian, but I tell you, I lived just as good and just as separated life as I ever have since then. Amen. And, and I never had the problem. I went back to high school. I never had the problems that a lot of folks have, a lot of young folks seem to have. I, I was, uh, I know I pastored another 12 years, and I know something about some of the problems that some folks have. And I've thought about it. But you know, I believe the difference was, I told everybody I met, I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. Praise God. I was just an old Baptist boy, but it didn't bother me what folks said about me. I wasn't afraid of being criticized or talked about. In fact, that never bothered me a bit in the world. Never bothered me a bit in the world what folks said. Why, bless God, would make me a bit of difference in the world what they said. And, and I just testified to folks on the school ground, to teachers, to principal, to school superintendent, to, uh, well, just anybody everywhere. Praise God. I remember... When I first came off the bed of affliction, the first time I walked to town, I ran into a friend of mine, a bosom pal. He and I had been before I'd become bedfast. But uh, you know, somewhere or another, the world will soon forget about you. I remember he came to visit me one time after three months, and I never did see him anymore. So you see, it'd been a little over a year since I'd seen him. And so he saw me, and oh, he just made over me, and as though he was just so thrilled to see me. And he and I sat down on the running board uh, of a car, and uh, I, I found out that I have to, in this day, I'm getting older, you know, a lot of these kids and young folks don't know what a running board is. And so somebody came here one back and asked me, so what's a running board? <laughs> well, how many of you know? <laughs> sure. This, you have to remember, is 1934. Uh, Automobile, 1934 V8 Ford. They had running boards in those days. And I remember as we sat down there and began to talk, well, he began to talk just like he always did because he is the same old creature he was. And he began to talk about things that we did and had done. And I just sat there with a mask-like look on my face as though I, it didn't register, as though I didn't know what he was talking about, though I did know. And, and so he looked up at me and said, what's the matter with you? I said, not a thing. Well, he said, you act like you don't even know what I'm talking about. 
And then he began to laugh, and he pointed down to a building not too far away. And he laughed, you see, about something that happened one night. And from the natural standpoint, everybody, I guess, has had some natural talent. Some folks have musical ability, and some folks mechanical ability, and some folks electrical ability. And, oh, I don't know, I never had any kind of a talent from the standpoint of music or mechanics or something. But I can't tell you why, but there's two things I could always do. I could always tame any kind of a wild animal, and I could always open any lock. <laughs> now, I can't tell you why, just natural ability, I guess. But some way or another, locks would intrigue me, and I could, I'd always open them, you see. And now, that I had to tell you so you'd know what he is talking about, you see. Now, I opened a few buildings just as a kid, about 13 years old. And, uh, and uh, but I wouldn't go in. See, my mama told me it's wrong to steal, so I, uh, the boys went in and got a little candy. That's about all they was interested in. Of course, I helped them eat it after they got it. <laughs> of course, one reason was I was afraid of the dark anyhow, but... Uh, and then I could always pick up anything and anyone looking at me. Slide a hand, you see. And sometimes I never did just deliberately get anything. But sometimes the boys would chicken me out, you know. And they would, uh, uh, and so they'd be watching me, you see. We'd go into a store, and six or seven of them were watching me, and we'd come out, and they'd say, well, you didn't get anything that time because all of us was watching you. The clerk was watching you, and I'd start pulling out of my pocket. You see, I had it. And I could always do that. Now, that's not too good of a talent, you see. <laughs> that is, if you misuse it wrongly. Now, I haven't, I haven't misused the talent, you see, since I've been a Christian. It does come in handy sometime if you're traveling across the country, you see, and want to get into a friend's house and spend the night. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, they don't mind, you know. <laughs> I have stopped by at some postages and opened the door and went in and left a note on the inside and said, why don't you stay home? Guess who? And then locked the door and left, you see. And they, they wondered, come home, the doors is locked, and somebody here left a note. One time we stayed all night, didn't have any place to stay, so we just stayed all night and wrote them a note and thanked them for the hospitality and went off. <laughs> but you see, they were good friends, fellow pastors, and so uh But anyway, that's what he was talking about. I had to explain it to you. And the boys had gotten some candy that night, and I was responsible. I mean, they couldn't have done it without my help, assistance. And, uh, and so he just laughing about how we put that over, even while we were being watched. And so he said... Uh, and I just sat there, you see, with a mask-like look on my face, and he said the second time, what's the matter with you? I said, not a thing. Well, he said, you act like you don't even know what I'm talking about. Well, if it hadn't been for you, we wouldn't even have gotten the candy. Don't you remember? And he pointed to a building about a half a block away. You remember that night, such and such a night? I said, why, Lefty, his name was Clarence. We called him Lefty, he's left-handed. I, I said, Lefty, the fellow that was with you boys that night's dead. Oh, he said, you didn't die. I know you, Kenneth Hagin, that you were sitting there on that running board. I know you nearly died, but you didn't die. Oh, I said, Lefty, I'm not talking about physical death. I said, there's a man on the inside. And the man on the inside, the real me, the real Kenneth Hagin, has become a new creature in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 said, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away, I quoted to him. Old, all things have become new. I said, Lefty, you're looking at the same house, the same body, but I want you to know that the man that was responsible for stealing that, the fellow you were talking to now is a new creature and hadn't stolen anything, and it's not going to. Praise God. And I knew he knew what a liar was. And so I said, the fellow you were talking to now hasn't told a lie and is not planning on it. I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I have been born again. That old man's gone. Praise God. I'm a new man. And I remember he got up off of that car running board, you know, and walked two or three steps and turned around and looked at me like he thought I was a nut. <laughs> And he walked two or three more steps and looked at me, and I sat there just laughing, you know. And finally he walked around the corner of the building, and after he got around, he peeped back around the corner. <laughs> he thought there's something wrong with me, and thank God there was. <laughs> I'd just been born again. I'd just been made a new creature in Christ Jesus. Praise the Lord. 